Okay, welcome to our second example on hydrostatic pressure. Now this is going to be a little bit easier than the one we just visited, but in this one we have this weird looking container that is open to the atmosphere on one side, but it is actually closed on the other side. So this right here is a cap, and that cap is at 30 centimeters from ground level, and the open surface here is at 90 centimeters from the ground level. So the difference between the open surface and the cap here, that distance is you know 90 minus 30, which is 60 centimeters. Now, this container is filled with water, and we know that water has a rho, or a mass density, of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. This is just a given for the problem statement. And because this container is open to the surface on one side, P0 is going to be 1 atm, or 101.3 kilopascal. So that is the atmospheric pressure here at the open surface. Now, the problem statement is, what is the pressure at the capped end of this container? So in other words, what is the pressure right here of this fluid, of the water, at that cap? So at that location, I'm actually going to mark this, uh, I'll call this point B, um, and then at the open surface, this point I'll call point A. And the thing we know about the liquid in this container is one, it's at hydrostatic equilibrium. So this water has already settled, this liquid has settled inside of the container, it's not moving anywhere. But also that this fluid is at rest, this liquid is at rest. And of course, because it's a liquid, that means all the water molecules are incompressible. So because this is incompressible, we actually know that all points along a horizontal line are going to have the same pressure anywhere along that line. So if I were to draw this random line across the horizontal width of this container, then all points along that line are going to have the same pressure, where it's, whether it's here or here or here or here. So we can use that knowledge to our advantage. Now we're looking at point B here, right? That is the closed capped surface of this container. So if we were to draw a line right at point B horizontally across the container, then we know that all pressure along that horizontal line is going to be the same. So in other words, this point that I'm going to draw right here, this I'm going to call point C, right? That's, that's just along this horizontal line at point B. Well, from what we know about hydrostatic equilibrium, we know that point C is going to have the same pressure at point B. So if we could just calculate point C or the pressure at point C, we would essentially know what point B is, right? Because they're going to be the same. So let's actually do that. Let's use point A and point C and try to calculate the pressure of point C, which gives us the pressure at point B. Now, our hydrostatic equilibrium equation is the pressure at any depth is equal to P0, which is the atmospheric pressure at the open surface at the top, plus rho times G times D. Well, rho is your mass density of the liquid, G is your gravitational constant, and D is the depth at which you're studying the pressure to calculate this P value right here. Now, this should be a pretty simple plug and chug, but there are some discussion points around the metric units that we're setting. So I'll get to that in a bit, but let's actually start filling in these values. So the pressure that we're really interested in is point C, right? And that is going to be equal to this P0 value. Now P0 is PA, right? That's the pressure at the open surface right here. And P0A is really just that 101 point or 101.3 kilopascals, this value right over here. And we're going to add to that this rho times g times d. Okay, so let's start plugging this in. Pc is equal to Pa, which is 101.300 pascals, plus rho. Well, rho is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times d. Now what is d? 
Well, D is the depth of the pressure that you're studying. So if we're trying to figure out what the pressure at C is, the depth is really going to be from point A, which is at the open surface, all the way down to point C. So what is this depth right here, right? That's, that's the depth that we're looking at. Well, 90 minus 30 is 60, and 60 centimeters converted into meters is 0 0.6 meters, right? Now, this is where I want to kind of stop, and let's talk about units, right? This term on the right-hand side is essentially pressure, right? You're adding pressure and pressure to get pressure. So what are the units on the right side? Well, it's kilograms in that first term, it's kilograms over meter cubed, and then for the gravitational constant, it is meters per second squared, and then for the depth, it is simply meters. So if I were to multiply these units, these units of measure out, you could see that the two meters cancel out, and we're really left with kilograms over meter times second squared. So really, this is the unit for pressure, or one pascal, right? Now, how do we actually get that unit? Well, we know the famous equation, force equals mass times acceleration, right? F equals ma. Now, we also know that pressure is equal to some force that's being applied over a perpendicular area, right? F over a, that is the unit of pressure. In this problem, our mass is really kilograms, right? And our acceleration is meters per second squared, right? That is force. Now, what if I took this unit of force and I plugged it into this equation? Well, pressure, now the units of pressure is going to be kilograms times meters over second squared all divided by area, and area is simply meters squared, right? Area is just a two-dimensional unit. I know this is getting messy, so what I'm going to do is by the magic power of my tablet, I'm going to select all of this, and I'm gonna move it here on the right side for a second. So now we know that this is the unit of pressure. Now obviously, this looks very sloppy, so I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna say this is kilograms times meter over second squared times meter squared, right? I'm just bringing this unit up into the denominator of this numerator. Now, you can see that M and M cancel out, so we're really just left with kilograms over second squared times meter. And hey, what do you know? This unit here is the same as this unit here. So we understand that now the pressure units obviously work out well, and I just wanted to make that quick pit stop so that we understand the units of Pascal and pressure and all that fun stuff. Okay, so if we continue on with the problem, we can basically calculate 101 300 Pascals plus this rho density times gravity times depth. And this is just a plug and drag, right? Just enter that into your calculator. And we get the pressure at C is 107, 186 pascals, or about 107 point, let's say, 2 kilopascals. Great, so this right here is the pressure at point C, right? And remember, this liquid is in hydrostatic equilibrium, so the pressure at all points along a horizontal line are going to be the same. So really, pressure C is equal to pressure B, and that means at pressure B at the capped surface, the pressure is 107.2 kilopascals.